I'm about to build the shovel and rake blocks for Lori Holt's Calico Garden. And I'm up here at canvasworkspace.brother.com. And I want to log in and select all the pieces that I need in order to build that block. What I did was I traced all of the simple shapes for Calico Garden onto plain printer paper using a black Crayola marker. And then I scanned those shapes into the Brother Scan and Cut and uploaded them into Canvas for later use. I'm gonna come over here to the My Projects tab. And to make the shovel and rake block, they are in numerical order. I need 70, 71, 72, 73, and 75. So here is Calico Garden CG 70 through 79. I'm gonna click this button right here to edit this project. I did number inside of each one, but I don't want those numbers. So I am just going to take these. I'm going to just pull what I need off the mat. 70, 71, 72, 73, and 75. Okay. And I'm going to put my cursor up here at the top and just drag it over the entire mat, everything that's left, I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard. Now I need a half inch piece of straight bias strips for the handles. And so I need one that is 10 inches long. This I'm reading from the blog, be in my bonnetcode.blogspot.com. So it's one 10 inches long and then press both ends under to finish at eight and three quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna build that myself. I'm gonna come over here to the basic button. I'm gonna click that. That's gonna give me basic shapes. And I'm gonna choose a rectangle right here. I'm gonna grab it and drag it onto the mat. And then I'm gonna come up here to the piece of paper. It says show properties going to click that and I do not want to maintain aspect ratio and I'm going to change this to 0 0.50 so there's my half inch to 8.75 to 8 and 3 quarters I'm just going to hit enter and let me get this out of the way there we go so now I've got that let me do this right here I'm going to change this to 90 there, that straightens that out. Okay, now I'm going to X out of that one. I don't, that one looks good right there. And then I need one more. It says eight inches long. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to grab another rectangle and go into the properties. And it is 0 0.50 and 8.0. And I will make it 90. Okay. So there is the one that is eight inches long, eight, two and a half inch long, quarter inch wide, and eight of them that are two and a half inches long. That is for the rake. So I'm only going to make one. Let me bring the rectangle back and hit the properties again. And it's going to be. 0.25 by 2.5 and I will go ahead and make this 90 and X out of that and then I'm going to right click and duplicate that gives me two highlight right click duplicate that gives me four and right click and duplicate and that gives me eight. Okay, so there are the little parts of the rake, little tongs of the rake. All right, so that's good. I'm gonna highlight all of these. I think it's edit, yes. And let's align top. There. Now I know they'll all fit straight on the fabric. Okay, and then I can bring everything back onto the mat. Now, Everything will not fit on the mat for a single cutting unless I use the 24 inch mat, which I might. If you have the SDX 85, you cannot scan a 24 inch mat, but you can cut with the 24 inch mat. So if you're doing this with an SDX 85, 
then you can use the 24 inch mat for these big projects. I need this just for the download for the software to convert it into an embroidery design. I'm going to come over here to the title and get rid of CG 70 through 79. I'm going to call it shovel dash rake. And I'm going to come up here to project and hit the inbox with a plus arrow and save the project. Okay, so that has been saved. Now I'm going to download it to my PC. Click download and download to PC shovel dash rake FCM. So now I have all of the pieces that I need in order to be able to use in Brilliant Stitch Artist 2 to build the design. Now I want to do the scan and cut transfer. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to come up to project. And here on area size, I'm going to jump to 12 by 24 inches. And that way I can just put all the fabric on one mat and I will be able to get it all cut at one go. Okay, so now these are ready to download to the scan and cut. And I am just going to click download again. And I'm going to click scan and cut transfer. And that will put it into the temporary memory pocket. And I need to go ahead and get my fabrics prepped with heat and bond light on the back. And then I will cut them out on the scan and cut. I'm over here at the scan and cut and getting ready to cut out all of my pieces. And I have got the low tack mat. This is the turquoise or the aqua colored low tack mat and I don't trust the stickiness or lack thereof so all of my fabrics have scotch tape on all four sides to hold the fabric down because it is definitely going to want to move around on me. I could use the regular tack but it's not much more sticky than this one. I could buy a new mat but I'll just end up having to tape after a while anyway. Tis the nature of mats. So I'm going to put my little table up back here so I've got some room. Move this back a little bit. On the scan and cut when you first turn it on your main menu you have pattern and these are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it and you have scan. Well we're not doing a scan just yet. We will be scanning the map but not using that menu. That menu is what I used to scan in the original shapes when I traced around. We want to retrieve data and I'm going to do that and it wants to know where I want to get it from. I can get it from inside the machine, from the cloud, from a USB or it might be cabled to my computer. I want to get it from the cloud and there it is. Now I had told it a 24 inch mat and I figured out I can get all of this on a 12 because these little pieces that are right up here, those are 0.75 in length. Um, the I'll, I'll zoom you in real close so you can see what I'm talking about. I had to read further into the blog and come to find out those that I had made that were two and a half inches, they were actually folded in half is the way she did it to make the little tines for the rake. So I went back into Canvas and changed these in the properties box with a length to 0.75 and then duplicated them until I had eight, exactly as I did the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put the mat into the machine, drop the cover. I'm running the black and since this is an SDX model, it's the auto blade. I'm going to push the mat in and just kind of snug it up right over here in this corner. There's a sensor and I'm right here on these buttons. The center one is the load button. So I'm going to let it load. Okay, now it's ready to go. Now we do want to do a scan to make sure that the fabric that I have on the mat is gonna, all of the designs are gonna fit the way I want them to. So here on the menu, this little blue box right here with a bar across it, that is also a scan button. And that's the button we want to scan this mat. So I'm gonna touch it. 
and it says scan the mat, I'm going to tell it start. I get questions about the accessories cup on the side of the machine. That's a command razor cup for your shower. It works great. I have them all over my sewing room. Well, this is pretty good. Let me get you in here. So you can see the shapes are pretty close to being where we need them. So I'm going to take this one. These are still grouped. If you send them down from the cloud grouped, they're going to stay grouped and you can't ungroup them. Let me move this right there. These all look really good. I'm going to move that down just a little bit. I'm going to go over to the edit button. And right here, there's a crosshair under here. That's for very minute movements. And I'm just going to tap it just a little bit and get it down away from the edge and kind of just center the whole grouping just a little bit better. Sometimes when you do it with your cursor, you move it a whole lot. That looks pretty good. I'll tell it okay. And then these two, I want these more centered on the fabric. Okay, that looks great. I think that that is all going to cut out just fine, provided that the tape holds. Now I'm just going to tell it okay. We're going to back out of all the menus and OK. And it says please select. I'm going to tell it cut. I hope it doesn't mind that I didn't use the 24 inch mat. It does not seem to mind that because it looks like it's all going to work. So I'm going to hit start. If I didn't have the tape on, that would be a hot mess. Now, what has happened is one of the pieces that was already cut jumped up off the sticky. That was this one. And so it thinks it's not high enough. See that? It had already come loose. So it wants me to pop it up to a two. There's a lever over here. I'm going to push it up to two and just tell it start. And hopefully it will keep cutting. I don't know. This, I don't think this is good. You know what? I'm going to hit pause. I am going to lift up this. Okay. I'm going to hit the back of this with some KK2000. Now see, the fabric is taped, so it should cut just fine. And I know this one is going to pull up as well. I can, it's already just really super loose. So, and it hasn't even started this one yet. Y'all, this is how you kind of... I probably should have done that from the get-go. All right, so let's try this again, shall we? All right, let me load the mat. Now I'm going to tell it start, and it's going to pick up where it left off. That's how you get by. Hopefully it'll work, because it has started cut cutting that rake head. So. That's what I was worried about, was those little three-quarter inch pieces. see how we did here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I'm going to have to, I've got one little bitty tiny couple of threads that I'll have to use the scissors for on the rake head, but otherwise it came out just perfect. So see, don't freak out if something tells you, oh, it's not the right size or it's not the right height. Just, um, you can change it. Does not affect anything at all. 
I have to get this tape off later. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, so all the pieces are cut now. I am ready to get into in Brilliance Stitch Artist 2 and get this whole thing designed properly. So that's Sulky's KK2000. That is a miracle worker and great to have in the sewing studio when you're playing with scan and cut. It doesn't leave a residue on your fabrics. It's absolutely wonderful. And as you can see, it worked perfect and it didn't gum up anything. So we're good to go.